I got interested in Agincourt when I was a student studying the reign of Henry V. And then as I started my doctoral research, I realized just how many important documents there were in the National Archives about the English army and the campaign of 1415. And I've devoted quite a lot of my academic career to looking in detail at those sources and creating a database of the English soldiers known to be on the campaign. My interest in Agincourt is really from the medieval warfare perspective as I study um, slightly later medieval warfare and I'm really interested in the impact of things like the longbow on warfare and tactics and, and the weapons and armour that were used in the period. I'm researching uh, the representation of medieval warfare in uh, 20th century cinema. So uh, I'm interested in Agincourt because it's one of those battles that most people have heard of. Very few people have ever even been to Agincourt and a lot of people's experience comes solely from Henry V and from Shakespeare. My interest in the Battle of Agincourt uh, actually is wider than the mere battle itself. Um, my basic research interests are, are on the impact on, of war on civilian populations, on the, on the folks back home, rather than the soldiers who actually went abroad to fight. I'm also interested in um, what happened when the men went away, uh, because a lot of the people fighting in the army, and certainly the knights and the squires, were drawn from the gentry class. Uh, and these were people who had greater or smaller estates in England, and what happened to those estates when they went away. My personal interest in Agincourt comes mainly from being an arms and armour historian and being very, very interested in medieval uh, arms and armour in general, but particularly because I spent several years um, studying the accounts of the Privy Wardrobe, the organisation within the Tower of London that supplied arms and armour, armour longbows, arrows like this, uh, to Henry V's forces uh, in the wars against France.